to today's webinar, Everything is E-Commerce. Now what? Now that everything is e-commerce, what does this mean for you, your business, and your clients? In this webinar, we will our speakers will present the issues that accountants face with e-commerce, talk specifically about Kelly's firm and what her firm uses to eliminate manual data entry, how she's able to increase value for her clients in less time, and how she embraced automation to provide a better client experience. Our speakers today are Jason Richelson. Jason is the co-founder and CEO of Bookkeep, an automation platform for accountants, bookkeepers, and business owners. He has spent the past two decades deeply rooted in payments, uh, payments, business automation, and accounting systems. Jason began his career at Price as a Price Waterhouse Coopers systems analyst before launching several companies. And for each of the companies that he has founded, he personally closed the books, so he possesses both the technical knowledge of accounting and the business acumen to create products that help organizations of all sizes scale their operations. Kelly Gonzalez is the founder of Totally Booked, and if you mix a creative mind with a number cruncher, then throw in a little dash of New York City attitude, you get Kelly, a true entrepreneur that is all in all the time. Her first endeavor began just five years ago when she founded Totally Booked and with the purpose of assisting small businesses in becoming more profitable by using efficient accounting processes. Kelly is a QuickBooks Advanced Certified Pro Advisor, a member of the Intuit Trainer Writer Network, a HubDoc Top 50 Cloud Accountant. She's on Avalara's Social Media Top 100. She is an Insightful Accountant Top 10 Pro Advisor, as well as the host of Insightful Accountant's QB Talks at Neighborhood Watch. We also have a third speaker, if I can figure out how to get her in to, uh, into the webinar uh, after I'm done speaking, but uh, that is Kristen Nees Sarando, and she is the founder of The Friday Guide, an advisory and consulting house connecting accounting data and tech with creative people in industries like restaurants. She also co-founded Leading Lady Machine Works along with Kelly, an accounting-focused cheeky gift and custom swag design house. In short, her focus is on supporting those who make life mathematically balanced and magically delicious in all the ways that can be accomplished. Kristen sees her work as a translation between different sides that usually aren't that different at all. Before I turn the event over to our speakers, I do have a little bit of housekeeping. Just a reminder that this event does not qualify for CPE. The event will be recorded and you will receive the link uh, within about 24 hours. The presentation deck is in your chat. And we do have um, two people answering questions for Q&A. So as the speakers go through uh, the presentation, if you have any questions, put them in the chat and they will either respond to you directly or put them out to uh, the speakers to address. So thank you for joining us today. And Kelly, Jason, and Kristen, uh, once I get you in here, it is all yours. Thank you. Awesome. Um, so thank you very much for that intro. Uh, Kristen is actually just in the chat to answer questions. She won't be speaking today, but she is my business partner. So that part was totally accurate. Uh, and she did help us put this deck together. So at least we are now giving her credit for that. <laughs> um, as Gary mentioned, I am Kelly Gonzalez, and we're going to kick off this uh, webinar by talking about my e-commerce journey and how my practice has changed over the years, um, kind of with the times, right? So a lot of things are changing in our industry, but then also the world changed very much in the last couple of years. And so part of that was me having to kind of embrace those things, if you will. Um, I know that we went through intros. Uh, so why I embrace e-commerce, why you should care, <laughs> when it matters most, and how Bookkeep can help. That's what we're going to cover in the next, um, I'd say probably about 45 minutes or so. Um, so Retail accounting, also referred to as e-commerce accounting, uh, used to be relatively easy. I'm going to say this is pretty accurate, right? It used to be that you would get um, your deposits into your bank. Those deposits would match to your sales. And then eventually, let's say it was Square or PayPal or Stripe would take their fees back and you would then be left with, you know, basically the sum of those things. Um, what has happened in more recent years is that those processors are now making sure that they're getting their payments before you are, essentially. Uh, so they are collecting your money, they're holding on to it, um, and then they're paying you out 
pretty much on their terms. And that applies to, you know, obviously me, we're doing that in our, in our actual e-commerce shop and our Etsy shop, but to a lot of my clients as well. And so we started to see that shift a couple of years ago. And I guess it's understandable that the payment processors want to make sure that they take their fees first, they're covered, they're not having to worry about coming after, you know, essentially the seller for any of that money. Um, but on the accounting side, it made things a lot more difficult. So we weren't able to then match those deposits anymore. It wasn't as simple as just matching our sales. Um, we had to start keeping track of where the money was. So if it was something where Square was holding on to it and they put it into what I call a holding account or an exchange account. Um, they're now functioning more as a bank. And so it's not as simple as it used to be of just matching those sales. You're really having to dig in, see what that deposit was made up of, see where the fees went. Was it a return? Was there a chargeback? Was there something that you had to be aware of in that number? Was it a negative? Maybe there was a return that had to be canceled out, you know, canceled out the entire deposit. All of those things have become much more complicated than they used to. Um, so my journey, <laughs> generally speaking, and some of you may already be aware of this, uh, I was working a really crappy job. I was really unhappy. Uh, and it was a matter of who was going to say uncle. And so my boss and I really didn't get along very well. We were both not happy with the situation. Um, and I was fired. And as much as that might sound very stressful, it was probably one of the best days of my life. Um, when I was fired, <laughs> I was fully prepared. I was ready to walk out of there that day. I was like, Hey, bye. Do you need anything else from me? No? Cool. All right. Awesome. And I got outside and I called my aunt and she said, oh, great. I'm teaching a QuickBooks class next week. Make sure you're there. I thought, oh, okay. Um, she said, I think this is something that you'll enjoy. It's something that's right in line with what you do. I'd like to see how it goes. And so the rest is history, so to speak. Uh, I started my practice on desktop. I bounced around all over you know, Long, Long Island, New York City, any leads essentially that came my way. Um, and I learned how to do bookkeeping better. I went, I went to school for it. So I decided that I wanted to learn more about it. I wanted to understand it better. The computer side of things, the technical side of things came very naturally to me, but I needed to understand the actual accounting side. Um, and so I took what came my way. I learned what companies I did and did not want to work with, what kind of people I didn't, didn't want to work with. Um, and I'm saying that very simply, but that was actually probably the hardest part. Um, knowing your ideal customer and getting to know what you want to do is part of growth, I, I will say, but also just a really difficult um, task to take on. Uh, and so to figure that out, I quite literally took anything that came my way. Part of that started to become e-commerce later on in the journey. I'm not going to say immediately um, because let's not forget I was on desktop. I wasn't sure where I wanted to go. I needed to meet some more people. I needed to figure out what kind of technology I wanted to use. But in the beginning, for sure, I was taking anything that came my way. Um, so I looked at what could I already do? What was I doing? What could I do efficiently? And that's when I started to kind of, um, I guess, form my practice and really take shape into moving towards what I wanted to do with more intention. Uh, so taking all of these leads coming in, starting to explore different industries, starting to work with different people, all of these things started to really teach me what, or show me, should I say, reveal to me what it was that I wanted to do in the future. Um, and so I looked at what did I already know and what did I need to learn to move into working with the industries that I wanted to work with. And part of that was realizing, I guess, in this industry, we learn to work with different personalities. Um, sometimes it's different companies. And Full disclosure, e-commerce was not one of the ones that I was looking to get into. Uh, I was terrified of sales tax. I was, you know, and to be fair, they do make it sound really scary, <laughs> um, but sales tax, creating Nexus, having to work with different applications for those things, um, having to learn um, what could and couldn't import into QuickBooks, then doing it wrong in the beginning because I had no clue and I'm flooding QuickBooks with all of this tech, you know, all of this information. Um, it wasn't something that I was too keen on, but as I started to get more leads from that space or that industry, I kind of realized that I had to embrace it. <laughs> and so as part of that, it was learning more about sales tax, learning more about the technology that was involved, learning more about applications like Bookkeep, knowing that I did not, and as soon as I discovered QuickBooks Online, to be fair, 
I wanted to automate everything. I wanted an app for everything. I did not want to have to data entry anything into QuickBooks. I wanted to make sure that whatever was coming in was coming in straight from the source and that I could tie it out if I needed to. I wanted to make sure that it was accurate, not somebody keying in some numbers. God forbid we missed something, we put a decimal in the wrong place, whatever the case was. I wanted to make sure that it was being done the right way or the efficient way. Um, and so part of discovering e-commerce and wanting to work with it was one, learning how to work with it, knowing that I had to understand, like I said, sales tax, um, the different fees that were involved, if a client took a loan from somebody like Stripe, what are we looking at for um, principal and interest? How are we making those entries? All of those things were perplexing to me, if you will. Um, and so I needed to take what I knew and then also learn a little bit more, right? So, and like I mentioned before, so retail accounting used to be for just retail. And when I say that, I mean, we started to see an increase in PayPal, we started to see an increase in Stripe and Square. All of the different payment processors to me are now what I would consider part of e-commerce. It's an e-commerce aspect of maybe a more traditional business. So if you're looking at somebody doing professional services or consulting, um, or I had a lady that was selling um, olive oil, <laughs> but occasionally she would go to this you know, flea market and she used her Square processor. So she was swiping somebody's card and unbeknownst to her, there's a fee involved. There's a whole process to entering those um, transactions. Those were the things that I started to see an increase of uh, because it wasn't as simple as just saying, oh, just keep using QuickBooks payments and it's going to do all the work for me on the back end. And now I don't have to worry about it. I had to be aware of the different options and business owners tend to make those decisions without speaking to their accountant. Uh, so it's usually when you see that deposit and it says, you know, Square or Stripe and you bank fee it and you're like, oh, hey, you signed up for a new processor. What, um, want to give me some access, want to tell me what's going on there. Uh, so it's not just for e-commerce anymore. We're seeing that with, like I said, consultants. We're seeing it with people that are selling physical products. We're seeing it with people that are selling digital products. Whatever the case is, we're having to account for the different ways that money is making it to the bank, but then also different ways that it's passing through QuickBooks and or Zero or your accounting system. But obviously, I'm partial to QuickBooks. Um, Gary, do you mind launching the poll? Yeah. So we want to know, are you seeing clients starting to use e-commerce tools? And when we say that, we mean Stripe, Square, eBay, PayPal, Shopify, et cetera. Um, it's not just narrowed down anymore to selling something on their website. E-commerce has expanded well beyond that, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go for a couple more seconds here. If anybody else wants to participate, and then we will share those results. Awesome. It's just out of curiosity. Yes, <laughs> 36 people. <laughs> so it's true, right? We're starting to see an increase in these tools and there's no, I mean, you already know, there's no guidebook, right? The rules change all the time. What do we have to account for? What forms do we have to fill out? All of those things are kind of coming at us. Um, and so using, in my opinion, any tool that's gonna make that a little easier is the way that I'm going. So I had to make a choice, as I mentioned, right? So I was gonna stay, stay safe, Search for the traditional clients that were using QuickBooks with QuickBooks payments, um, wasn't needing, you know, they weren't needing anything too complicated, or I was going to have to really kind of lean in and become that beginner again, because learning this part of the business was, I guess, akin to what I had already had to learn, or at least in my opinion. So I started out, I learned bookkeeping, more traditional services, I go to somebody's office every day, and now I'm pivoting to being completely remote. I'm working with people that have online sales. I'm working with um, you know, different sources of income for different companies. Some companies have set up two payment processors or three. Now they're accepting you know, payments on their website, possibly processing it through their calendar invites. There's just so many opportunities for them to take in you know, these payments. And so I leaned in. And when I leaned in, I realized that I was gonna need some help <laughs> with learning the different tools, um, with learning all the places that the that the different um, income could come from. 
Uh, and the first one I did was actually Etsy, but we'll get to that in a minute. So now we're back to my journey. Uh, so take out what I could do, pushing forward, and then going all in, embracing that everywhereness um, of e-commerce. And again, I can't stress enough how I started to see it literally come through on almost every client account that I had at the time. Um, just seeing the different descriptions in the bank feeds. And having to then learn, you know, how can I get access to these things? How can I connect this payment processor to QuickBooks? How can I make sure that it's mapping correctly? All of that was, it was like starting all over again in some weird way. Like I know the accounting basics, but knowing how to make that part of it and making sure that my clients knew that I knew what I was doing was a whole journey in itself. <laughs> Um, so opportunities are in assignments, but they can be fantastic fine posts. So I changed course to learn more about what I can do. And I applied what I already knew and I took what I didn't know. And I said to my clients, Hey, I know the accounting side, I'm going to make sure that that all <laughs> winds up in the right place, but I'm starting, I'm going to start to connect some different technology and I'm going to start to work with some different apps and try and make sure that we're getting accurate numbers into your books so that neither you or I is scrambling at the end of the year. We're not trying to figure out where, you know, if this deposit came in, we're not missing out on the expense that was the, the fee that was involved. Um, and we all know that our clients love to hear like that they can accrue more expenses. So the minute that I was saying, hey, we have to make sure that we're counting those expenses as well as that income, they were very much more open to it. <laughs> um, so again, I started Square, Stripe and PayPal. Uh, some of you may, may remember the beginning of the PayPal app that connected to QuickBooks that was not so pleasant. Um, and so <laughs> I needed a better solution for making sense of what was coming into QuickBooks. Uh, Square and Stripe, same deal. So it, if I remember correctly, it was Square that would do a deposit and then also do um, a deduction right after. Uh, and everyone has pivoted towards, or I say most processors have pivoted towards just giving you the deposit after they've kept their money. So to make sure that they get their payments first. Um, so I looked at automation that could help. So I went through a couple of different apps in the beginning that didn't really do what I wanted to do. I mentioned that PayPal app that I struggled very much with. Um, <laughs> and manual entry was not an option for me. So I can say from early on in my practice, I knew that I wanted to download from the bank. I wanted to download from the uh, back end of the store, whether that was Shopify or Square or um, Stripe. I knew that I did not want to do manual entry for the sake of efficiency um, and time. There was no shot that I was going to sit there and key in all of the sales that came in, nor was I looking to journal entry everything in and figure out what was a fee, what was a loan payment, what was taxes, where did the taxes go? Did they keep them? Do we owe them? I didn't want to do those things. I wanted to just be able to look at it and make sure that it was correct um, and absolutely have it be accurate. Um, so I trusted the outcomes of what I was seeing in the data and my time. So like I said, from pretty early on, I knew that I was going to use an app for this. And so I went and I explored and I went through some not so great ones um, until I found one that was going to save me time and essentially for me, saving time, saving money. Uh, but also it gave my clients confidence, um, giving them the opportunity to log in to see what it was without having the ability to screw anything up. Um, they didn't have to create access for me. That's what I was looking for when I was looking at apps that would connect to these different uh, payment processors, different websites, different opportunities for them to sell. Um, and as long as it was coming in correctly and it was making my job not easier per se, but simpler, right? So now we have the deposit comes in from let's say Stripe and we have a journal entry that comes in and says, this is what the sales were. This is what the fees were. Here's what sales tax is. Oh, they paid the sales tax for you. So we're going to clear that out. And the fee has been put into this expense account. And so here's your lump sum of what the deposit is going to look like. Going into the bank feed and being able to match to that deposit made reconciliation so much easier. So now I'm not looking at a bunch of sales receipts or anything that's flooding QuickBooks per se. I'm looking at here's what actually happened and here's where all the numbers are. And I always say to my clients, if we need more, and this is just my opinion, 
But if we need more detailed information, we can always go back to the source of the sale. And that's my opinion. I don't do the every journal, I'm mean, sorry, every sales receipt, breaking out individual tax and fees, et cetera. I'd rather that my journals match what actually hit the bank. Um, and so, like I mentioned, recruiting your clients and having their, um, their information match, but then also telling them from early on, and this was just me being really honest with them saying, hey, I'm new to this process. I'm not new to accounting, but I'm new to this process. And so part of this is gonna be a learning experience for both of us. Um, when they were able to see that my fees didn't have to go up, right? I was able to use a tool that was getting the information in. There was no harm done by way of anything that changed on their side. So I wasn't going in, they didn't have to worry about um, a product disappearing from their website or you know something changing on their scheduler. I just needed the simple connection of them allowing Stripe to pull into QuickBooks. And then I was able to do all my work on the mapping side. And they, they trusted it because it worked, right? But I will say, honesty is the best policy when it comes to this. Because like I also mentioned, when I was still trying out the other apps that I was working with and I was having difficulty with flooding QuickBooks with sales receipts and all of the different data that was coming in, I was just letting them know what was going on. And to be fair, most of them probably didn't notice and it was my own stress that I was creating, but I wanted to make sure that they knew what was happening. So Jason, this is where I'm gonna loop you in. Yes. <laughs> Do you remember when payment deposits were gross receipts? Yes, I, hi everybody. So um, I'll take over from here and I've got the yeah. uh, uh, screen share, which I think is working, right? Yep, perfect. Is it? All right, because I don't see it on my screen. Um, <clears throat> hi, everybody. So, yeah, remember, I've been in retail a long time. I had a grocery store, a, a, a wine store. I still have a wine store. And when I first opened my wine store, um, I had a point of sale system that would basically do a summary entry into QuickBooks desktop. And the deposits would always match because the deposits were all the sales plus sales tax plus tip. And it would match to whatever my point of sale system said I collected in payment receipts uh, for that day. It was easy. Um, the world's changed. I mean, that was 2004, 2005. And uh, the world's changed because of the squares, the Shopify's, uh, you know, and you no longer get gross receipts. Uh, you now get net re receipts, uh, which is basically after a bunch of stuff is taken out, which is why this has become so complex and why it's much harder to just look at the bank feed and understand what's going on with your customer's business, you actually need to get access to um, oops, I'm on the wrong screen. You need to get access to the raw data in order to properly book um, sales for a customer. So <clears throat> it used, you know, normally uh, in retail and e-commerce, it, it's really all the same. You're going to have a summary of your sales for the day and, and it, it is getting more varied in e-commerce than in retail and restaurant because you might have shipping income, because you might have service income or other types of income levels. But, but basically it comes down to having a summary of what your day was uh, in terms of your sales and uh, your payments against it. Also liabilities are getting more uh, diverse in e-commerce and also point of sale in retail. So like, even if you're, if you have a small store, that's a, um, you know, they, they sell gift cards or it's like a little gift shop. If they're using Square, they have the potential to basically get loans from Square, have a debit card from Square and do, uh, you know, a bunch of other things in Square, none of which will then eventually hit the bank account. So, and that's what we mean with liabilities that even if you may think you're not an e-commerce and you just have a gift shop as a customer, they might have some of these com complicated deposits uh, that are hard to decipher unless you have full access to all the data involved. So liabilities gen coming out of deposits is one of the uh, issues you find with the new world of all e-commerce. And charges and fees become more complex. And that's the key reason that it's become so difficult to handle manually or just to look at the bank feed is a lot of these fees are now coming out of the deposits before they hit. It used to be your fees would come out, you know, um, on the third of the month for the previous month. 
And the hardest thing you had to do was to take those fees, change the date to the last day of the previous month so that they line up with the last day. Uh, it, was, it was pretty easy, but now you're getting net deposits, potentially net of all this stuff. And uh, you can't just look at the deposit and, and think, you know, and book it to income because it's really much more complicated now. So with Square, what I was saying, <clears throat> Square is, and, and a lot of these apps that your customers will be using are doing similar things, but um, your, your sales, it, basically your deposit is the sum of your sales and liabilities, which are sales tax, minus the fees, minus those loan payments that Square has, minus these debit cards that Square's debit card charges, which Square allows customers to do, and it's very hard to find out what what those charges were right now, and hopefully that will change. And also now Square has a savings account. So a customer can actually set aside 8% because they want to keep it in Square so that they don't spend the money, which is a novel thing. It's a profit first thing. I, I, I love it, but you won't know what's going on because that money's not hitting the bank account. So this just goes to show that deposits are getting so much more complicated in e-commerce, but you, know, you don't have to despair. Um, things, oh. you know, yeah, go this ahead, actually Kevin. speaks to, and I'm interrupting, but this actually speaks to one of the questions that we've gotten in the chat. Um, sales need to be booked in detail and summarized by day. So I agree with this, and that's why I had mentioned that I switched from using something that did uh, multiple sales receipts to doing a journal to sum it up. Um, can you explain the importance of that journal and the holding accounts that we discussed? Kind of everyone's becoming a bank part. Yeah, yeah. Best practices in retail, and this goes back to what I literally learned this from my point of sale system from Microsoft. Um, Microsoft RMS, which is an old point of sale that I used in my wine store in 2004, generated essentially a Z report, but it was electronic, and it went and posted it to QuickBooks automatically, which was great, your QuickBooks desktop. And what that summary was, was a Z tape or a Z report. It's all your sales, um, all your sales tax, you know, all, all the, um, the, the top line stuff against all your payment types, you know, cash credit, you know, math, at, at the time it would be Visa, MasterCard separated from Amex because Amex, you know, you always want to separate your payments by how they're deposited. Um, and that was, you know, old school accounting. And I'm sure people on this call have read, I can't even find anymore, but there's some post on how to turn a Z report into a sales entry, you know, sales receipt in QuickBooks that everyone's read, you know, going back 10, 15 years. But so, so the best practice actually has always been post a sales summary on the day of sales for a retail e-commerce business. And then when the deposits come, you reconcile those deposits to the sales. And, and it's a much easier way. And there's a bunch of reasons for doing that. And it's been the case going back, you know, many, many years, because as your, your clients want to know how they did on those dates. And if you're only looking at deposits, you're not actually posting sales on the day they occurred. So the day before Thanksgiving could be a huge day, but if the deposits don't hit till the Monday or Tuesday after, and you put, book them on those days, you know, not only, you know, you're, you're not showing what actually happened on that day, but um, you know, you're also not getting the details. So the, the best practice has, has been, and it's kind of gotten lost with Square and with some of these new apps that are just all about the orders. Um, it, it's really kind of gotten lost to do sales summaries on a daily basis. Yeah. Do you want to so, um, so what, what this means is, you know, going back to, to best practice is you basically have accounts or we call them balance accounts that you'll need mm -hmm. to reconcile. And it honestly, what really happens is every one of these systems that's going to pay you is going to have a balance. It's just like you have a checking account balance. You have to think about Square as having a balance that you want to keep in sync with QuickBooks. Square owes me, you know, Square has a balance of $2,000. My QuickBooks balance should show $2,000. And my QuickBooks balance for Square should show all, you know, should show summarized daily stuff, as well as any other stuff that comes out of my balance that Square might do. And that's the same for Shopify and all. So you, you well, have to start, go ahead, start thinking of them as balances you have to reconcile. Right. So this is my early on experience with this was all related to PayPal. So clients would get a payment into PayPal. They would then pay something out of PayPal, pay for something online or pay, let's say, another contractor. And so there was this whole series of events that was happening in PayPal 
And at the end, let's say end of the month, I would see something like PayPal pass through the checking account or something along those lines. I'd say, hey, you have a PayPal account that you maybe haven't mentioned? Oh yeah, but you know, we're just using that to accept payments from such and such or the site or whatever it might be. And I said, well, you know, that's, that's real money. <laughs> You've accepted money. Uh, you're also accruing expenses in there that I don't now have in QuickBooks. And so I'm gonna need to you know, bring that information in. But PayPal is a bank and that always yep. like yep. blew their minds, right? And now Stripe and Square are setting themselves up to be a bank. They're taking your payments. They're holding on to them. Even Etsy does it, right? So they'll say, yeah. okay, yeah, you've made $1,000 in sales, but we're going to keep some in your reserve. And so we're only going to pay you this amount after fees. And so knowing that balance, knowing that you have money elsewhere, because it is your yeah. money or your client's money, right? So it is their money. But knowing that amount is part of your job, unfortunately, as a business owner, as the accountant, just knowing that there's essentially different checking accounts out there that they're holding your money in. That's all now yep. having to be on the balance sheet. And, and that's something that I, I think Kelly and I, and I've talked to other accountants in the last couple of weeks, I've actually changed how I talk about it. And it, it's become clear to me, and I think also to a lot of accountants, is we sometimes we talk about clearing accounts or you know, re, you know reconciling clearing accounts. If you change your thinking to, this is a balance account. I need like, just like a checking account, I need to keep these balances in sync with QuickBooks. It becomes a lot clearer. Your PayPal balance, you need to keep in sync because it's like a bank account. And regardless of what we, you know, what we want to happen, Square and Shopify are going to become banks too. They're going to become like PayPal, Stripe as well. Um, and they're all going to want to hold, they're really pushing to hold the money from mm -hmm. all these small businesses, you might, you know, if they're using Stripe and PayPal and Square and Shopify, you could have those four separate balance accounts include in addition to their bank account, in addition to any credit cards they might have. So you, you know, you have to start thinking about understanding to keep these balances in check. Um, that's something that the bookkeep platform is, is gonna help you do, but it's important to get that mindset um, clear uh, because even for me it wasn't i kept thinking of it as clearing accounts of like i'm going to get paid this much so i need to reconcile to what's going to come but that's changing as the stuff doesn't come anymore as soon as you enable that debit card on square you don't get deposits anymore they don't come anymore it stays in square until you press the button and transfer a certain amount of money so um and shopify is is somewhat similar um it's it's a new product so i'm not totally sure how that's going to work but 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 and paypal is the same as we know i mean sometimes paypal will auto deposit if you have it set up but often it you just don't know if somebody used the money before it was deposited yeah. you know so so that's where the thinking and that's where we talk that's really where it comes together where we say everything is e-commerce is these type of transactions and balance syncing is what e-commerce is but it's also coming to restaurant and retail grubhub doesn't deposit every they deposit on every wednesday DoorDash is similar every week at uh, e, um, uh, Uber Eats is I think every week. So right. you end up having to really keep track of those balances, especially if you're gonna close the books at the end of the year. Well, how much is Uber Eats still holding for my restaurant that is still actually my money that I just haven't received yet? So it's important to sort of think that, that, that way. And even just knowing that you have to ask your clients for those numbers, mm -hmm. you know, knowing that you have to ask them, um, okay, so we're closing out. What was the balance in Uber Eats at 12, 31, 21? I'm like, what? <laughs> you don't think of it, but it is money that came in. It's essentially money that's owed to them. It's being held in, let's say, their specific, you know, Uber Eats account. It's money that we unfortunately now all have to be yeah. aware of. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, so in the past, a business was in control of their sales tools, uh, it, which basically means, you know, you had your point of sale system and you had your credit card processor and you took cash. You, you were pretty much in control and you, you of what was going through that point of sale. But now because, um, you know, one example is that sh uh, with, with uh, Shopify, Shopify has added Shopify installments. So if your customer is using Shopify, all of a sudden you're getting two deposits now every day. Why are you getting two deposits? Shopify doesn't actually very clearly explain that in their user interface, but it's because they're routing customers to a different payment method, which is a pay later tool. And that gets uh -huh. deposited separately because they work with a different partner. 
the merchant may or may not know that that's happening. They may or may not care. Um, but the bookkeeper accountant is the one, you know, who has to deal with these problems. Uh, so that's yeah. what I mean. That's one example of sometimes even the business owner isn't fully in control of the tools that they're using and what, how that affects you, the accountant bookkeeper. Um, and, uh, and so anyway, it makes it more complicated, but, uh, we do, you know, our job is to help, help you manage that. Um, and, and, you know, this isn't meant to scare you, but, but it is to educate that the world, I mean, there's just so many tools that uh, merchants can use now. And yes, it is complicated uh, because they can use all these different tools, but this is what we're trying to bring together into a unified interface. But there's a lot of different software systems for sales and payments, right? So, and one thing to understand when you're dealing with everything is e-commerce, which includes retail, is there's sales systems and there's payment systems. And sales systems can take multiple payment methods and payment systems are part of those systems. So you might be selling on Shopify, uh, you know, and I don't know if you can see my mouse, but Shopify up here, uh -huh. but you're taking Amazon Pay as a payment method. You're taking Sezzle as a payment method. You're taking Afterpay as a payment method. Each one of those will be a deposit in your bank account. And Shopify is telling you how much money you should expect from Sezzle or from Afterpay or from Amazon Pay. And with Bookkeep, we will book all of that into a single journal entry so you know that Sezzle owes you $100. And with our Sezzle integration, we will then also pre-book that deposit from Sezzle as well as any fees associated. So you don't actually have to do anything. We don't have all the apps on the screen yet, but we intend to. Um, and one of- Gary, you know, that this is gonna grow. This, and this yeah, change. actually- <laughs> I don't have everything on here either. There's still, um, if anyone's ever seen Bolt, Bolt.com or Fast.co, which are essentially shopping payment methods that sit on top of the shopping carts to bypass the regular shopping carts. I've never seen their deposits, but both those companies have raised hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. So we'll start seeing it. But, but you know, and, and an interesting thing, you know, I've noticed that, you know, at CBS, they now take Venmo and PayPal at the register. So granted, CBS is a huge enterprise client, uh, but if, if they're taking Venmo and PayPal at the register, you know, you're going to start seeing Venmo and PayPal being used on smaller point of sale systems that smaller businesses are using. So, oh, yeah. you know, this is only to show you the inevitability of, of where uh, the world is going. And, you know, we're here, we're here to help um, navigate it. So, yes, next poll question. Gary, <laughs> how many of you, how many on here have, are seeing some of these apps or how many of these apps are you seeing in your practice actually per client really is what we're asking. I would say average my or clients total. probably have yeah. mine are averaging probably between four and 10 sometimes depending yeah. you, you gave the example of you could be selling on Shopify, but you're accepting Amazon pay or a firm or one of those after pay or whatever that might be. And right, so you're right. having to hit in a couple of different places to get that information. Exactly. It just changes the whole process. Yeah, and if you, you know, you need to have access to those systems in order to get the fees. I mean, that if it's just a payment method, you know, you, you're not gonna get the full deposit, you're gonna get fees. Yeah. And in order, you know, the, to give your client the best, um, the best uh, financial reports possible, you want to properly book those fees for them. And, and that's something that we can automate. We automate for you with Bookie. So what was the response there? I don't know where. Yeah, I'm waiting for it to pop up. Oh, there it goes. Ah, see, four to 10 has the 51%. Yeah. And some have 11. That's, yeah. Yeah. So even more. Because yeah, there's so many options. I And I do think it's going to grow and mostly because, um, you know, think about bolt.com. They just raised $350 million, you know, at a $10 billion valuation. There are going to be so many salespeople out there getting bolt installed on every shopping cart, et cetera. And, and, yeah. and some, someone's asking about Facebook, Instagram as well. We, we want to have an integration for Facebook and Instagram uh, shopping. Uh, we have not been able to find automation. The only thing slowing us down as a company to help everyone here is, getting access to the data in an automated fashion. And, you know, one of the, we'll have to, we're going to have to figure out a way to, to, to rise up and, and make a lot of noise to, you know, tell Facebook, Hey, you can't build 
an e-commerce platform without reporting for the accountants. You know, yeah. bolt.com, you can't build this tool and not give reporting or API access so the accountants can get it. But currently that's the I only thing slowing us down, but we're they're still- They're also marketing well. to, they're marketing to the small business owner. Oh, you yeah. can get more money in by accepting more payment options, right? So when you sign up for Etsy, it's like, do you want to accept Etsy? Do you want to accept PayPal? Do you want to accept gift cards? Do you want to accept all the things? And they say, of course, because they want to get all the money in, which is totally understandable. Uh, but then now we're seeing it after the fact. Exactly. I mean, every deposit that you see in the bank account is hours, you know, could be an hour of work a month, if not more, depending on if you have the login or not, you know, how you want to book it, um, if you're going to do it manually. So, um, it, you know, in order to get the books properly accurate for your clients. So, um, yeah, it. Yeah, and of course, clients are going to take tools that help them sell more. It's there's not not much you can do about that. Um, you know, if you have a client that says, "Hey, I want to use this payment method. Are you okay with it?" I, I'm not sure I've ever heard of that situation happening. They just do it generally. In my in our experience, and by the way, I should say um, that I didn't say at the beginning. Bookkeep also has an accounting services team, so we actually have 50 clients in our our lab. So we have a lot of experience direct bookkeeping experience. We have three full-time uh, accountants on staff who work for those clients. So I really understand the pain. I hear it from them. I talk to them every week, twice a week. And, and I understand the pain of what they're dealing with, um, which is what we're trying to help uh, solve with the bookkeep platform. So, so on this slide 28, so um, yeah, in the future, the business is going to try and stay in control of their sales tools with these apps becoming banks. Um, undeposited funds, essentially these balances being used to pay expenses. Um, checkout flow hijacking is what I talked about with Shopify, taking, you know, redirecting you to a pay later uh, payment uh -huh. method. The e-commerce marketplaces are growing. There's so much money going into it. I, I, you know, everything's moving online, no matter what. A restaurant is half their sales are online. Half their sales are coming through Grubhub, through uh, DoorDash, through Uber Eats. That's five different point of sale systems, essentially, um, and five different deposit schedules and, uh, you know, and multiple fees if you're using Uber Eats. And by the way, even with these systems, not to make it complicated because we do try to handle it, but we don't do Uber Eats yet. Some of them actually pay the sales tax. Some of them don't. So you have to know that information, whether okay. Uber Eats did pay the sales tax or not. With our tool, if we if we have connectivity, we will be able to show that to you. We don't do Uber Eats yet, but um, and and sales tax is a nightmare. But of course, if you use a tax jar or a Davo, uh, mm -hmm. which is Avalara, that gets pretty well handled by those tools. And it's really if you're if you're really with an e-commerce customer that's selling to all fifty states, you you can't do it without one of those tools. But there's good tools, you know, to to advocate for getting into full e-commerce with shipping, there's some really good tools out there to help you with the sales tax. So you don't really have to worry about it because you shouldn't actually be worrying about each jurisdiction. You should really let one of those tools handle it. It's well worth the money. Right. Um, that's, and that's what made it so much less intimidating for me. Yeah. Knowing yeah. that I could kind of put my trust in a professional service, right. To be able to do that for me, because there's no way that I'm going to go, I'm going to know what the sales tax rules are in Omaha, Nebraska, right. exactly. <laughs> not a thing. Yeah, and 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 that's part of I, what be, you know an accountant bookkeeper moving forward into the future is. It's really becoming a having a tech stack that you can use that you can trust to handle these these um, uh, you know handle these needs, whether it's sales tax or these proper sales entry postings that we do. Um, it it really is is what you know the direction that that accounting is moving towards. Yeah. So on, on this slide, so yeah, basically the way you reconcile accounts is going to evolve, you know, deposits will be booked in detail as a reconciliation to the sales entry that was posted on the day of sales. And, and that's the best practice for, and in summary format, because in summary format, it will then match um, and you'll be able to easily see in your balance account that, you know, we did $100, you know, gross receipts on this day and I got $100 deposited of which you know, 10 went to fees and 90 went to my bank account. So um, that that's really how, that's how Bookkeep handles it. And that's been the best practice um, uh, for a long time in retail. Um, so 
Um, knowing your sales, uh, where's Kelly picking up on this one after me, but uh, knowing your sales and how much money do you expect basically is no longer a given. So you have to then move to a reconciling sales to deposits and liabilities to payables, which is, is complicated if you're dealing with transactions, is less complicated if you're dealing with summary entries. And right. of course, bookkeep handles all of that. So, you know, if you don't, you know, if you're not using bookkeep, I mean, basically this would be uh, something that you'd have to do manually. You would have to create some workflows. You would log in. You probably wouldn't do it daily because it's just too much work. You might do a monthly entry um, and, or you yeah. might do a weekly entry um, and then uh, reconcile to those deposits in in a clearing account but you won't be able to fully reconcile because depending on the system uh sales deposits do not always match exactly to the 24-hour period of sales uh, wow. when you're using bookkeep we actually do break it out by that so that you can see that i got this money and it was for these four days broken out properly and i'll show you an example in a second um one of the issues with doing a manual summary entry on a monthly basis is you're not giving your client the ability to see how their sales were in, you know, historically on certain days. And you're potentially missing issues that can come up in, depending on the system, but I'm sure everyone here knows that they've had clients that didn't close their, their batch, whether it was in a restaurant. In Shopify, you can have the same issue when you're using draft orders. If you don't properly close that order out, you don't get paid for it. If you don't do um, essentially a daily reconciliation to the deposits, you potentially could miss that. Um, and by finding that, your client's going to love you if you find that right away. Uh, if you find it a month later, it um, it's a hard thing to tell a client. And we had that same experience where the client said, no, no, I did all these sales. Your numbers are wrong. And we said, no, you didn't get the deposits for it. Uh, and this was in history. So we weren't working with them at the time. So you didn't have those sales because you never got paid for them. So um that, that's one of the issues with manual processing, especially when you're dealing with well, many payment systems. The other side of going online and being essentially current almost daily mm -hmm. is that you're pulling that information in on a regular basis. If you are waiting until the end of the month and you're just doing it to close out, they're not using QuickBooks as a tool to keep track of their actual balances. They're just doing it to close out the year and give them books to their accountant, which that's I always say is not best practice. You should know your numbers. You should know what's going in. You should be looking at it on a regular basis. And it yeah, should make and, and that's a service when you talk to your clients. It's like, I'm going to do sales reconciliation for you as well as bank account reconciliation. And I'm going to do it on a daily basis. And granted, it's it's hard to do manually, but if you let automation work for you, you can offer that product, uh, that service to your clients and say, I'm going to reconcile your deposits on a daily basis to make sure there's no errors, to make sure everything's working across all your systems like you think it's working because you client are only looking at your reports in Shopify or Square or whatever. And I'm looking at also that you got paid for those sales. So using automation can allow you to do that. Um, so what Bookkeep does is basically we take the data from all these different apps and we automatically do daily postings summarized uh, to the sales day. And then we also then post the deposit entries that reconcile essentially in that balance account in QuickBooks. Um, we do it um, in, an, in a accrual basis. So basically we post your sales on the day the sales happen and the deposit just becomes essentially a transfer from your square balance to your checking or from your Shopify balance to your checking or your afterpay balance to your checking, et cetera. And we, That's important. we post those. Well, then I don't want you to kind of glaze over that. That's important as well. So when you set up Bookkeep, and I've done this for my clients and for myself, you're going to see that it's going to create essentially an account for the money that you're holding within those payment processors. So if it's square and we know that they're holding X amount until they deposit, you're now going to be able to keep track of what sales came in, what was pushed through square. And then when that transfer happens, it's going to, it's going to make an entry to transfer to your actual checking account or yeah. client's checking account, whatever that is. So you're going to have some one for Square, one for Stripe, one for Shopify, one for Etsy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, but it's important to notice that. And those will then match in your bank feed. So when you see those deposits, you'll actually see the match lining up with our journal entries. Um, and, and here's an example of when you're using a bookkeep, what you're clearing your balance account. So this is the Square balance account. Um, the balance at the upper top should match the balance when you log into Square. 
Um, mm -hmm. And here, just using colors, although they're not easy to decipher, but um, okay. the, the, the sales are entered in the sales entry, which are the bottom entries you see for the 18th, 19th, and 20th. That's the amount expected from Square to be deposited. And above, you see the deposits coming out in the clearing account, and they all match up. And now that's the gross amount. But when you drill into those journal entries, you'll see the net amount that hit the bank. And when you're looking at the bank, you will match those deposits. So, um, so here you see a deposit entry that matches in your banking feed. Um, so you'll see the green match button and you see how it's broken down on line three is the bank account deposit, which is net, but, uh, on the credit side, you see, okay, what's the gross amount by day? Because here's an example in Square where, for whatever reason, on on uh, on Feb 9th, there was a transaction that uh, didn't make it in into the Feb 9th sales summary for that day. So, uh, or deposit, I'm sorry. So it came in the next deposit, um, and based on probably cutoff times, but our system allows you to see that easily and understand how to match it up. And then below you see the bank account deposit and then the fees. And by the way, with Bookkeep, unlike any other system, we, also, we capture all financial details. Whatever's happening in Square, except currently, unfortunately, the bank card transactions, we cannot capture the bank card transactions, it's not available yet. But at the very bottom, there's app fees. Other apps that connect to Square can actually charge fees through Square to the client that come out of the deposits. We capture that for you and post that for you, as well as the regular Square um, fees are also booked here properly. And this is automatic. You set it up once and it just runs every night. Um, and then this is what a summary entry would look like for Square, where you have gross sales for that uh, Feb 10th uh, day, that 24 hour period. You have discounts, you have sales tax. Um, and, and we have the options to break some of that out in more detail. If you have sales by category, you can do that. Sales tax can also be broken out by category um, within reason. You don't want to do every single one. You might want to do it by state if you're really in e-commerce, but we can handle that. But we'd recommend using tax jar or Davo. Um, As do and then I. we also, importantly, other apps out there, like Square has an integration to QuickBooks. Uh, that they built. And they started doing a summary, but the summary is based off of your payments. It's not based off your sales day. So you would get a, one journal entry based off what you did on Square credit cards. Then there would be another journal entry for that $24 in cash. And then there would be another journal entry for that $29.40, which in this customer is my wine store, I think is DoorDash coming through Square. I'm not sure which one it is, but so you would get three journal entries for that, which is also confusing. You know, this is a full summary of the day and then it, it posts to the proper accounts. Um, and to answer your question on PayPal, yes, we do uh, capture all the expenses itemized uh, for PayPal. Um, so let's go to uh, the next screen. So in summary, um, basically what we do is we do accrual entries of sales summaries and then match to the bank deposits, uh, as well as pre-post those bank deposits across 20 plus platforms now. Um, for PayPal, we do um, specifically, instead of using the PayPal Connect app, which will post every single order, we actually uh, post a summary of the fees only because those orders usually are taking place on Shopify or Etsy or um, Squarespace. We post just the fees on a daily basis but we do itemize every expense transaction from PayPal properly, even with currency exchange and everything. So you get a, a proper, um, every one of those expenses can be booked. Um, we have a single interface, so it all looks the same. Uh, it doesn't matter what the app is, because one of the problems that you get with your clients using so many tools is you're gonna have to log in in so many places to get so much information. And where is this report in Etsy? And, and which by the way, Etsy doesn't have a real report. It's just some sort of a deposit something, it doesn't even make any sense. And, um, and so we normalize all that for you into a single interface, the mapping screens all look the same. Um, and we do allow bulk actions. If you sign up with us and you need to run history going back to, you know, as long as, as it's available, we can run every single day for you to get that detail. We've tr we have audit trail, we understand as accountants, you don't wanna deal with duplicates. You, you, know, you wanna make changes. Hey, I wanna change my mapping, I wanna actually, repost that with breakdown by sales category, we will then update the existing journal entries. We'll never repost to a new journal entry. That's super important. Um, 
We also provided some information, which I kind of showed you there, but um, we always will give you the details as much as we can in QuickBooks. So you don't have to log into our app or into the source app. So every entry we post has a link back to the source report in Amazon, in Square, and Shopify. So you can just copy that link and go directly to that report. You know, we're trying to save you time. That's the whole goal of the system. It runs in the background. And even if we don't have an app, like I talked about Amazon, uh, I talked about uh, uh, Uber Eats, we're, we're still gonna try and help you understand how it works. Um, and we're still, and we're working with all those companies to try and get access to data so we can automate it. Um, you know, we're, we're building white papers for, um, or, you know, eBooks on how to do some of them manually if we don't have the ability to automate it. And this is all we do. We're experts in sales reporting and deposit reconciliation. That's all we really do. And then just flip to the next slide so we can launch that poll. Okay. And then we can just continue talking, but I just want to make right. sure. Gary, okay. So are you interested in hearing more about Bookkeep? Yes, not at this time, or I already work with Bookkeep. Um, and so we wanted to make sure that if you guys were interested in hearing more, were interested in doing a demo, that we obviously gather your information. Um, and I shouldn't say we, because I guess I'm me, but Bookkeep is interested in having that information. Um, uh, one thing that somebody did ask, and I think you covered, how far back can you go? That's going to depend on what's available via PayPal, Stripe, Square, Shopify, et cetera. Is that right? Just depends on if the data is available, how far back exactly. you can go? Yeah, it depends on if the data is available. Yeah. 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 So we know that, unfortunately, there's really no uniform for that. Some banks will let you go back seven years and some will let you go back three months. Um, and so it's kind of the same depending on what the platform is. Yeah. So I would say we'll go to the next poll. We're not gonna show that one on the screen. <laughs> um, but the next slide, and I think it's just a sum up of everything we discussed, right? So in summary, um, point, oh, did you get the results? I guess that one's not coming, okay. Oh yeah, I'm not gonna, I wouldn't put that All one right. on. Um, yeah, so in summary, um, you know, Bookkeep is, 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 is the automation to help you with e-commerce. And I hope that, you know, Kelly and I were able to explain some, some of the things you need to understand for e-commerce, which really is anything retail now. Yeah, right? and hopefully not making it more intimidating, just trying yeah. to show you that there are, you know, tools out there that can help you do this. There are best practices, even though it's kind of ever evolving. Um, how, how you're having to do it, what information is being thrown at you. Um, I can say personally, and I think Jason, you can speak to this, that Bookkeep was born out of you guys having an issue in your own practice. And right. I found solutions because I had an issue in my own practice. So it's something that we have both journeyed separately, but together. Um, and so, you know, finding solutions is not always easy. Um, but I can also attest to the fact that you guys are also ever changing. And so as things come up, as these APIs change, as the information that's being given from Square, Stripe, uh, right. Shopify, et cetera, is changing, you're forever you know, kind of rewriting your code and making sure that everything is coming through um, so that anyone using it is not in a bad position. But you're yeah. also very good about taking feedback. Yes, so. we'll, take, we'll take feedback and uh... We we really it's it's a two way street. We 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 need uh, accountants like you, Kelly, and everyone here to to give us feedback and say no. This you know we want FBA on Amazon separated from uh, you know direct sales. So we're we're going to make that update. And um, you know so we we need to because there's just so much data and none of it's documented. Uh, so. Anyone knows who's logged in and had to download an Etsy or a Squarespace, you know, order list of, you know, it, there's just data is just getting generated. And in order to get it into proper accounting, um, we need to work, you know, hand in hand with the accountants to, to do it. Um, oh, I want to so badly read Rachel's comment, uh, but I'm going <laughs> to skip over what it was. So she said, I have a client who has 2021 gross sales pulled in via a different app. Uh, in 2022, I switched her to Bookkeep sales in QBO because they didn't exactly match Shopify. And why is that? The other app was pulling in on payment, not on sales. Right. And she had a hundred thousand dollar difference that crossed at the end at the end of the year. Wow. Yeah, because of the uh, yeah at the end of the year. If if you wait for the deposit to post yep. to post, um, you know, that's a, just a great example. If you're if you're really e-commerce retail, 
you're going to get those deposits from Christmas, New Year's in January. And yeah. you don't, you know, those belong in December. So, yeah. Okay. And it's, it's so, too uh, unfortunately, we also have to end. <laughs> Our time is yeah. up. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I know that Jason and I both have a habit of speaking quickly. So if you have questions, feel free to reach out to Jason at Bookkeep or myself. I'm always happy to connect with you guys on LinkedIn or Twitter or wherever you may be. Um, and I can say the same for him. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. And thank yeah. you for putting us on to all the bookkeep things. Thank you, everybody. And thanks for all the comments. And uh, yeah, reach out if you have any questions. Yeah. All right. Well, great. Well, thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, everyone, for attending today and spending an hour with us. Just as a reminder, you will be receiving a um, email with the link to this um, recording, which within about 24 hours, the uh, presentation was posted in the chat. And we'll also put that on uh, a link to that in the email that you will, will receive tomorrow as well. We certainly appreciate uh, once again, Kelly and Jason, uh, appreciate your time, appreciate yeah. the information you shared and everyone who joined us today. Thank you for, uh, for being here and look forward to seeing you all very soon. Thank you. Bye, everyone.